Hey everybody, Sean here and welcome to Revealing Truth. In today's video, Catherine tries to answer the question, why did Joseph's brothers bow to him? First thing we should be curious about is, why does she teach about bowing to someone? Could it be because of all the blowback she's gotten being referred to as a cult leader and allowing her followers to bow to her? That would be my guess. And we're going to look at some clips at the end that clearly show her false humility in this video. So let's hear what Catherine has to say. We, us brothers, were binding sheaves, which were of grain stalks, stalks of grain, in the field, and lo, my sheaves suddenly got up and stood upright and remained standing. And behold, your sheaves stood all around my sheaf and bowed down in respect. And the word respect is going to be the focus of this sermon. But it's interesting that if we look at all the other most popular translations, respect is not included. So keep that in mind. My brother said to him, are you actually going to reign over us? Are you really going to rule and govern us as your subjects? So they hated him even more for telling them about his dreams and for his arrogant words. But Joseph dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers as well. He said, see here, I have again dreamed a dream, and lo, this time I saw 11 stars and the sun and the moon bowed down in respect to me. And once again, she's using the only version that uses the word respect. He told it to his father as well as to his brothers, but his father rebuked him and said to him in disbelief, what is the meaning of this dream that you've dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers actually come to bow down to the ground in respect before you? Joseph's brothers were envious and jealous of him, but his father kept the words of Joseph in mind, wondering about their meaning. And so this was a prophetic dream that God gave Joseph. This was a prophetic dream that would come to pass. So in the dream, it was um, grains, like, like the brother's grains bowing down to Joseph's grains. But that was a prophetic picture of what would happen years down the line, Genesis 42, 6. This is the fulfillment of the, prophet, the prophetic dream. Now Joseph was the ruler over the land, and he was the one who sold grain to all the people of the land. And Joseph's half-brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the ground. And while respect is often one understanding of bound at someone, it's also shown in many verses to mean worship, especially when referring to God. But this is what she's using this example to show, that it wasn't worship, it was just respect. Now, just to clarify this story, um, there's, a difference between bow, uh, there's a difference between bowing down in worship to God or bowing down in worship to another God or person like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they refuse to bow down in worship to Nebuchadnezzar's golden statue. But there's a difference between that kind of bowing down in worship and then what the sheaves were doing and what Joseph's brothers were doing, which was a posture in their bodies to show respect and honor to a person, but not worshiping the person. Um, and we know this because the Amplified Version actually clarifies it. The, the, the translation, it says um, that the, the sheaves bowed down in respect, Amplified puts in parentheses. Not worship, in respect. And yes, it would appear that they weren't worshiping him, but concluding it was in respect only could as easily be reasoned as bowing to him in a plea of desperation. Remember, in the chapter before, there was famine across the land and these people were starving, desperate for food. They were at his knees begging for him to show mercy and sell them some food. And we also know that Joseph was a servant of God. He wasn't in the wrong. And we don't see anything in scripture that he was supposed to say, no, you are worshiping me, you can't worship me. This was showing that this was respect and honor happening, not worship. And she's really trying to hammer that point in, that when you bow to someone, it's okay, because it's not worship. Um, it's just like, you know, the queen or the king, the king in England, and when it's the queen, when it's, whether it's the king or the queen, the, the people in, in, not just England, the UK, um, believe that 
this queen or king is anointed by God as a servant of God to be a leader of the nation. Really? Do people actually think that the queen or king of England are anointed by God? I mean, maybe some do. I'm actually just curious because I couldn't say that God anointed Justin Trudeau or Joe Biden and their leaders over nations as well. And so when they come to see the king or queen, they curtsy or bow, and that is not worship. The, the king or queen never claims to be a god. They actually worship God and claim to be anointed as a vessel by God. And so even if you come from a different country, even like America, if you get to meet the king or if it's a queen sometimes, you probably most people would curtsy or bow, but it, they, know, they, they themselves know it's not worship. It's honor, it's respect. You know, and even if it's not, your feeling or culture to do that, that's not normal. In the UK, that's normal. But if we were to go meet the president or someone that you just really respect and honor so much, there's this feeling in you of like so much respect and honor that saying the words merely, I respect you, I honor you, doesn't feel like enough. So sometimes people may, when they meet someone they really respect or like the president or something, they might go like, I, I respect you haven't seen anyone do that for Trudeau or Biden. Hmm. Something like that, like, I respect you, thank you, I honor you, something like that, or I honor you, something like that. It's, there's this feeling of I honor you so much that words don't suffice in a, in a godly way, amen, not a glorifying a person way, but just a respectful, honoring way, amen. So that's just to clarify that scripture, what was going on here. So once again, why would she work so hard to give this message that bowing to someone doesn't mean worship? I can only guess that it's in light of all the critique she's received lately. Maybe it's just me, but I bow the head to no one. If I met the president or queen or whoever, I'd shake their hand, look them in the eyes, and say whatever niceties seemed appropriate at the time. But what we see happening in Catherine's church goes far beyond what she just said was simple respect. Happy birthday, Apostle Catherine. When I think about it, there are just not enough thank yous to say, to say thank you, thank you, thank you for surrendering your life so that we could be equipped. Thank you for allowing me to serve you. Thank you for allowing me to serve you. It's an honor to serve you, Apostle Catherine, and I love you so much. I love you so much, Mama. Happy early birthday. It is such an honor to serve you. This is blasphemy. We serve God alone. Luke 4, 8 tells us that we shall worship the Lord our God and him only shall we serve. It is such an honor to serve you. I honor you as your spiritual daughter. I love you and you're my favorite. You're my favorite person. You are everything to me. You're my spiritual mom. You're my David, <laughs> You're my best friend. You are everything and I honor you. and I love you so much. I love you, mama. I bless you. <laughs> In my opinion, Catherine Crick is trying to justify people bowing to her. And as we saw, it was far more than a bow of respect. But hey, what about you? Please leave your thoughts in the comments below and until next time, Take care and God bless.